بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده المنتجب ورسوله المرتضى وأشهد أنكم الأئمة الراشدون المهديون المعصومون المكرمون اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد When I came here 10 days ago, a brother sent me a pamphlet of a group has produced something where the fact that the imams or the prophet know all our deeds as we do them. As we do them, he has access to all our deeds. It's called Ardul A'amal. The presentation of our deeds to the Prophet. So he sees everything that we do. They wanted to refute this. The methodology they used, they brought, they looked in Al Kafi alone. That's the first problem. See, um, you, should, you should now be thinking now, of, you, you know the mechanisms of action involved. They only looked at Al Kafi. They brought the six from a chapter called Presentation of the Atman. There were six hadith there. If they looked in other chapters of Al Kafi, the same collection, they would have found more, but they didn't look at those. It's a weakness in methodology. They only looked at the chapter which said presentation. But if they did, if they looked in Salat, Zakat, other areas too, hidden, they, these they, they exist such. A hadith. But no, they only looked at the chapter which was specifically written presentation of Aman. There were six of them. They brought the six. And they very, very intelligently, they translated. It, it was good translation. The presentation was good. The methodology, I'm saying, I'm suggesting the methodology could have been better. For you to understand, it's not a game. These are very complicated pr processes that for 14 centuries it's been evolving. You can't come and invent your own system of just saying that this does not exist in our beliefs. Why? Because look at what Al Kafi is saying only. It's not correct. The methodology is wrong. The intentions may be sincere, but the methodology can't be accepted. Now let's say we don't, we say they're all weak, assume. They're all weak. And it, personally, it may be something I may believe in, for example. Someone can say, I don't care, they're all weak. It's all in the Quran, brother. See the Quran. The Quran is explicitly mentioning this. It's not something which is very remotely extrapolated. It's explicit. And all the commentators today are saying it. Ayatollah Khoi believes in it. Ayatollah Khoi, if you were to tell him, do you believe in Aradul A'mal ala nabi the presentation of A'mal, he would have just written, of course I do. Ask his best students today, Ayatollah Wahid Khurasani, Ayatollah Sistani, ask them, do we believe in Aradul A'mal? They all say yes. No marriage says no. And now this group, with something they've heard about Ayatollah Behbudi and Muhammad Asifi, now they had a certain reason for doing what they did. What did you take from there? Then you only use Al Kafi, neglect all the other collections, and then use a bit of Ayatollah Khoi's methodology, a bit of this methodology. You come up with, it's all concocted. It'll, it'll all be messed up. You can easily do it in a much better way. Look how such a conclusion can really cause, you know, not on purpose, but it causes mischief. Mischief will be spread. I'm not doubting their sincerity, but I'm saying the conclusion is going to cause mischief. And if we prove, like everyone has proved, that the verse of the Quran is clearly saying it's presented every action we do to the Imam or the Prophet, then we don't even need the Hadith anymore. Okay? Their problem is they, they've misinterpreted the Qur'an too. It's a very weak interpretation they've given of the verse of the Qur'an. 
And you know what the problem is? Sometimes they use Ayatollah Khoi, sometimes they don't use Ayatollah Khoi. I'll explain why later. You can't do that. This is not a game. If you want to do pure academic work, you have to have a kind of, you know, you can't just use a bit of this and a bit of that. Or at least don't make a quick conclusion. But let's look at the six hadith that they've used, why they've rejected it, and then what we have to say about each one. So in the first one, Muhammad ibn Yahya, if it's in yellow, the, the transmitter was sound, according to them. In red, there's a problem with the transmitter. So Muhammad ibn Yahya narrates from Ahmad ibn Muhammad, from Al Hussein ibn Sa'id, from Al Qasim ibn Muhammad, and the reason was because he was a Waqifi, from Ali ibn Abi Hamza, who was also a Waqifi and used a lot of money, who narrates from Abu Basir, his sound, from Imam Sadiq, who said, all actions of servants, good and bad, are presented upon the Messenger of Allah every morning, so be attentive of them, and this is the Almighty Allah saying, and say, do for, Al do for Allah will see your deeds, and so will his messenger. So all actions of servants are presented to the messenger of Allah. Now here, they said because of those two in red, we have a problem. Okay? Now, here, therefore, they say the hadith is deemed weak when you're analyzing the chain of transmission. They, this group, only use Ayatollah Khui, mainly. That's very restrictive methodology. But the question is, can the weakness be compensated by contextual indicators? And the answer we say is yes, in two ways. One is we have sahih, sound traditions reported with the same meaning as these in other primary sources. I'll bring one of them in a minute. Look, when you only look at al kafi this is the problem. But we have traditions from other collections which are saying the same that al kafi in this hadith is saying. So this upgrades that hadith. And also it's on a par with the Qur'an. This is the same meaning in another book called Basar al darajat and one of those 400 books. And um, here, Al-Sindi ibn Muhammad from Al-Ala ibn Razin, from Muhammad ibn Muslim, I asked Imam Baqir whether or not the actions are presented upon the Messenger of Allah. He replied, there's no doubt in the matter. Then he was asked about the verse and say, and say, do as you will for Allah will see your deeds and so will his Messenger and the believers. He replied, Allah has witnesses on earth. And here, all transmitters in this hadith are dream, deemed trustworthy by Najashi, who is one of the Rijali experts, one would be enough, and by Sheikh Tusi. And the same content of hadith by this collector and compiler are, exists with different chains of transmissions, all say in the same book, in Basair. This is, this is just one example. There are tens of them when you look in other books. So I'm just trying to show this methodology is wrong. You just look at Al-Kafi. And, and we said it's on a par with the Quran. That's the ultimate of upgraders. You don't even need hadith. And we did mention this. The Waqifis, they became Waqifi at the time of the demise of the seventh Imam. Until then, they were followers of Imam Baqir or Imam Sadr. They were okay then. And with some of them, Ayatollah Khoi himself says, he's a Waqifi, but he's reliable. Because in that time, he was reliable. Look, so we can't give a universal claim here. Each one has to be looked at separately. Some Waqifis may be still reliable, some Waqifis aren't. Depends who they are, what they've done, how they've done it, and so on and so forth. So you see, that's one hadith. A second hadith they bring by Ahmad ibn Muhammad from Al Hussein ibn Said, from Al Nadr ibn Suwayd, from Yahya al Halabi. There's only one 
which is doubted, questionable in this one, from Abdul Habib at Ta'i from Ya'qub ibn Shaib, I asked Abi Abdullah concerning Allah, saying, and say do, for Allah will see your deeds, and so will his messenger and the believers. The, the Imam replied, they, the believers, are the Imams. And this translation I've used from their pamphlet, and I thank them for it. Yes. Then they say that this Yahya al-Halabi, there are two of them. There are two of them. And when there are two of them, we don't know who they are. And since we don't know who they are, that's a problem. We can't accept this chain of transmission. So this is the problem of this being weak here is this, the second out of six in Al-Kafi. Then they say, Allah Majesty also says this is Da'if in Mir'atul Ughur. Look. Mir'atul Ughur was that specific text of Allah Majesty. Well, very specific. He said, if there are not two Rejali experts, I'll say it's Za'if. Otherwise, when there's one, it's sound. You can't use Allah Majesty's criterion here to make to extrapolate religion. This is not academic what they've done here. So when Allah actually deems a hadith weak in Mir'atul Ghul, it's different compared to his other books. In this particular book, Mir'atul Ghul, he has opted for a specific methodology whereby any hadith whose transmitters have not been authenticated by two earlier Rajali experts, they'll be regarded as weak. If they're not authenticated by two, where the norm was, if one, if it's substantiated by one, it's okay. But now he says two. Now maybe Allah and Majesty's aim was this, that those which are authenticated by two, it's very special. And that's why those hadith, he gives the term a'ala'i ahadith, very all, all lofty ahadith. And the, the more higher approach. Otherwise, all the transmitters here in this hadith are authentic. Okay, so here, everyone's authentic there. Now, according to Allah and Majesty, two or three of them, since they weren't authenticated by two, Allah and Majesty says in that book, but in Bihar and Anwar, he'll upgrade it. And his approach is that of upgrading. So he's kind of mixing different, you know, aspects. And concerning Yahya al Halabi, they said that it can be one of two people. Well, for you, you're confused about it. Why aren't other scholars confused about it? They've done more research, looked at the history, looked at tens of Yahya al halabis and they've clearly discerned which one is which. And for them, it's not a question, and many scholars have said this. Oytullah Makarim, Subhani, and so on and so forth. There's no confusion for them. And finally, again, it's on a par with other Sahih Ahadith, and ultimately, we're saying it's on a par with the Quran. That this is a lost cause where we're going. Hadith number three. Ali ibn Ibrahim. Ah, oh, Remember? It, this we have to say it's given. We accept it. But they don't. They don't. So Ali ibn Ibrahim narrates from Uthman ibn Isa, narrates from Sama'a, who heard from Imam Sadiq, who said, what's wrong with you? Why don't you, why do you disappoint the Messenger of Allah? A man asked, how do we disappoint the Messenger of Allah? The Imam replied, don't you know that your deeds are presented before him? When he finds sins in them, it disappoints him. Don't disappoint the Messenger of Allah. Do things that make him happy. They have a problem with these two. But with, with Oytullah uh, Khui, this is a definite acceptance. These two, they find problematic. Now, first of all, this hadith has been classified as trusted and dependable by many sources, including Allah Majlisi, father and son. Now, they say Allah Majlisi in Mir'atul Ughul says it's da'if. But in other places, Allah Majlisi says it's sahih. The methodology he used was different. Uthman ibn Isa has been deemed a waqifi. Okay. But still, many, including Oytullah Khui, deem him trustworthy, because this is from Imam Sadiq now, which is being, that Waqifi, if the events of the Waqifi was with the demise of Imam Qadim alayhi salam. But you can't say just because he turned bad at that time, when he was good, he was good, and he was relating good things. 
our other parameters come into play here. So one of the contextual indicators strongly accepted by Ayatollah Khoi and others is that those transmitters who have been related by Ali ibn Ibrahim are all considered trustworthy. And he said the same in relation to Ibn Qulawi. So here, Ali ibn Ibrahim, at least Ayatollah Khoi will accept it. The others accept it too, because they don't see the waqifiness being a barrier. And with Sama'a ibn Mihran, he's been authenticated by Najashi. They say, no, he's been authenticated by Najashi, but also he's been refuted by another expert. Then they say, of 800 years ago, a scholar said, whenever you have one Rajali saying no, another saying yes, we reject it. Okay, that one person was of this belief. What if another one says, well, we would have to see which one has more weight in them. And the scholars give this a lot of more weight, Najashis, over those who have rejected them. So it's only a question of methodology which makes it different. But to say down outright, this is wrong, this is weak, period, that, that's wrong. Hadith number four. Now this is how they wrote it. Ali narrates from Ali's father who narrates from Al-Qasim ibn Muhammad al-Zayyad, who is unknown, that's why it's weak, who related from Abdullah ibn Aban al-Zayyad, and they're unknown too. So two unknowns. I asked Imam Rida to pray for me and my family. The Imam said, am I not praying for them? I swear by Allah that your deeds are presented before me every day and night. The Imam said to me, do you not read Allah saying and say do, for Allah will see your deeds and so will his messenger and the believers. As I say, the tafsir of the Quran tomorrow. So they say these two are unknowns. They say this is declared weak, therefore, because when the, when the chain is incomplete, it's not sahih. So it's weak. But is this the end of the story? The same content we said, it's mentioned in other chains in al kafi and outside, that's one contextual indicator. Didn't Kulaini have indicators before him to suggest the reliability of the hadith that we don't have today, but he had them there. He was connected to the time of Ismat. He lived in a district surrounded by Sunnis and was asked to prepare a compendium of Sahih, Sahih Ahadith, so that the Shias can have a complete manual. And for some like Oytullah Jawad, the Amuli, this is proof, unless proven otherwise. Others are not satisfied with Kolaini's claims because Kolaini says this is all Sahih and he's brought the chains of all of them. He's, he's brought the chains, every single one. Now, Ayatollah Jawadi says, look, when he, do, when he does that in a certain context and claims, most of it has to be Sahih, but he had access to contextual indicators we don't have today. But then, this is Ali made me suspicious. Because usually they, didn't, they, didn't, they don't say Ali said. They say Ali's son of someone said. So the pamphlet, it said Ali's from Ali's father. The poor brothers missed something out. They missed it. When I looked at the original source, this was, it was Ali ibn Ibrahim. <laughs> this makes a big difference. Because Ali ibn Ibrahim was the one that Ayatollah Khoi said, whoever the transmitters have come from him, it's all I accept. They missed that for whatever reason. Okay, so this, yes, it may be weak because there are two unknowns, but that universal granting of reliability by Ayatollah Khoi there upgrades it and converts it to reliability. The fifth hadith, this one, Ahmad ibn Mahran, who's weak, Relates from Muhammad ibn Ali, who is sound. Who relates from Abi Abdullah al Samit, who is unknown. Who relates from Yahya ibn Musawir, who is unknown. Who relates from Imam Bahir alayhi salam. This really looks a, a twisted ahadith with these unknown variables. On hearing the verse of chapter 9, verse 105, he said, I swear by Allah that he, the believer mentioned in the verse, is Ali ibn Abi Talib. Now here, again, there are too many unknowns here. That's why they say it's okay, it's not, it's weak. But it's from Kolaini though. It's from Sheikh Kolaini, 
who claims all the hadith to be sound. And he brings the chains. But when we see it 1400 years later, there's a problem. Okay. But do you give him the benefit of the doubt? Ayatollah Jawadi Amuli says, yes, I do. Ayatollah Hui says, I don't. And they're both right in their own way. Okay? So, and furthermore, the content is on a par with the Quran, where it says, Imam al Mubin, we have a hadith in, in tens, where it says, Imam al Mubin is Amir al Mu'mineen, in chapter 36, verse 12. So it's on a par with the Quran, this hadith. And there are several other ahadith with sound chains in other sources again. And finally, hadith number six, they say a number of people relate from Ahmad ibn Muhammad, from al washa that Imam Rada alayhi salam said, Alhamdulillah, this one, they said it's sahih. And they said, Allah Muhammad said it's sahih in Mir'ah, so this must be sahih. Yes, there. That all the deeds, good and bad, are presented before the Messenger of Allah. And this, they said, Allah Majlis said in Mir'atul Ughul. So there were two authentications from Rajali experts. Okay, so here, you see, with these six, when you look at it now, these six in this slide, you see how easily they become upgraded. And without a doubt, this Tawatur, the water, in meaning, in this meaning, when you look at all the ahadith, without exaggerating, there are more than a hundred ahadith with this meaning.